Hey guys, welcome back to another 5 Academy video. This is Shahir. Today we're going to be doing some hard problems, as you can tell by the title of this document. So I have 10 problems here. You can take a look at them, try them yourself if you really want to. If you don't want to try them, that's totally up to you. You can just watch the video and get all the answers. Um, it's really up to you. The whole point of this is to give you exposure to the hardest, hardest, hardest problems that are going to show up on the ACT math exam. These are straight from like the last five, 10 problems exclusively, nothing easy. So um, hopefully this will help. The only thing I'll say is try these yourself. And also if you don't understand any of it, leave a comment down below or schedule a free tutoring session with one of our experts. You can also schedule with myself if you'd like, and we can walk you through some of these problems and more similar ones in a free tutoring session on our website. So again, there's a link down below. You can schedule a free, again, free as in $0. All you have to do is create a free account, which takes like 10 seconds on our website. And you can schedule a session with one of our experts to go through problems like this and ask any other questions you have about tutoring, creating a study plan, going through problems, learning skills, specific strategies, anything you see on our channel, you can ask about and our tutors would love to help you. I would as well. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. One square kilometer is how many square millimeters? So one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters. One meter is equal to 1000 millimeters. That means that one kilometer is equal to 10 to the six, which is basically a million or a thousand times a thousand uh, millimeters. Okay. Now, if we just square both of those, we'll get our answer, which is one kilometer squared equals 10 to the 12th millimeters squared. Simple as that. 53% of this number is 5 23rds of one number. So if we just put this into math terms, we just multiply this left side, we end up getting whatever 0.53 times 739 is, that's 391.67. And we find is fifth is 5 23rds of one number. So that is Let's just write this out, 391.67. The is is just an equal sign, 5 23rds of some number. If we solve for x by just multiplying by the reciprocal on both sides, we end up getting 391 times 23 divided by five, which is 1802. You flip a seven-sided dice 170 times. The dice is numbered this, one through seven, with one number per face. What is the expected sum of all the rolls of the dice? So imagine we keep rolling it, and every time we roll it, we write down the number that's on the top face. And we do this 170 times. So what's the expected sum? Well, we'd expect that, you know, every time we do it, every seven times, we should get every number because there's an even opportunity. We're assuming there's an even opportunity to get each individual number. So if we do seven rolls, we're just gonna get one, one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, and a seven. We can assume this. So if we add all these up, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven, we end up getting 28, okay? And across that many rolls, across seven rolls, if we get 28, the average per roll is going to be 28 divided by four, or sorry, 28 divided by seven, which is equal to four. So we, per roll, we're on average getting four. So if I just do this 170 times, multiply four by 170, we end up getting, uh, if you do that on your calculator, C. A geometric sequence has a fifth term, 23, and an 18th term, 44. What's the 85th term? So this is gonna be a pretty lengthy problem, so let's go through this. So we can first write that A5 is equal to 23, and we'll write that in equation form, A1 times R to the N minus one, where N is five, so it's just gonna be R to the fourth, okay? And then I can also write, I'll write it above, A, 18 is equal to 44, and that's equal to a1 r to the n, which is 18, minus 1. n minus 1 is going to be 17. If I go ahead and just look at this right here, and I divide the top by the bottom, I get 44 over 23 equals r to the 13. I can solve that for r by just doing the 13th root on both sides. I know it sounds funny, but 13th root is a thing, and that gives you 1.0512. Okay, now I'm going to plug this R into a uh, into this either one of these equations and solve for a one because I need that in order to solve the problem. So let's just do the first one. 44 equals a one times 1.0512 to the 17. If I just evaluate this, it just becomes some decimal number. So 44 divided by that decimal number is going to give us R a one. So 44 divided by is going to give us 18.83 something something something. Okay. Now, I have my a1, I have r, now I can just plug that into the base form of the equation. a n is equal to a1 times r to the n minus 1. That's it. So if I, I can just plug in a, we're looking for what, a85? 
So A85 is equal to A1, which is 18.83, times R, 1.0512, to the N minus 1, where N is 85, so that's going to be 84. We end up getting 1.0512 to the 84 times 18.83. It's 1248, which is basically this answer. So I obviously rounded decimals. And with decimals this uh, long, with numbers this big or small, it's going to matter. So, all right, this problem. The way you do this is you multiply this by the denominator just with a different sign. So 1 minus 5i, 1 minus 5i. So we're really just multiplying by 1. But the whole reason to do this is because this is a difference of squares, This uh, the i's will actually go away because the middle term... And when I, when I multiply this out, you'll see there won't be any middle term left. There won't be any i terms left. It'll just be whole numbers or i squared terms. Okay? So this is called complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate of this denominator, where the denominator is 1 plus 5i, the complex conjugate of 1 plus 5i is just 1 minus 5i. Okay? You take that number and you just flip the intermediate, the middle sign, and you multiply the other, the, the entire fraction by the complex conjugate divided by the complex conjugate. And it'll give you a whole number answer, at least for the denominator. And that's how you're gonna simplify to one of these forms. All right, so let's go, go ahead and do it. First, let's evaluate the numerator. So we're gonna have four times one, four times this, this times that, that times that. So four times one is four, four times negative five i, negative 20 i, negative three i, and then plus 15 i squared. And then the den denominator, you're gonna have one times one, which is one. 1 times negative 5i minus 5i, 5i times 1, which is plus 5i. You can see these cancel. And then you have 5i negative 5i, which is going to give you minus 25i squared. Um, if we evaluate the numerator again, we get, uh, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? We have, this turns into a negative 15. So 4 minus 15 and the whole numbers, that's going to be negative 9. And then negative 23i. And then denominator, we have, this turns into a positive. 25, so it's going to be just 26. So we end up getting negative 9 over 26 minus 23 over 26i. All right, so you see how we simplified it. It's essentially a plus bi form, whereas before it was a plus bi divided by d plus ci, essentially. All right, moving on. We're halfway done. Dolly scored a 95% average on her first four exams. She has two exams left. What is the lowest average she can get? on the remaining two exams to maintain at least a 90%. So remember that average, which I'll call x bar, is equal to, uh, let me actually write it in easier terms, average is equal to sum divided by the total. Sorry, now that's also confusing. We'll call it number of numbers, okay? So we know that the number of uh, uh, tests total is gonna be six. We want the average to be 90. So what does the sum have to be of all the scores? So let, let's, let's go ahead and figure that out. I mean, we can just solve for it. Sum is going to equal, if I just multiply both sides by six, whatever 90 times 6 is, and that's 540. So our total, if you add up all the scores, the six scores, it has to be at least 540 in order to meet the criteria of a 90% average, okay? So I know that the first four are going to be 95s on average. It doesn't matter if one of them was a 98. If I write another one as like a 92, then they'll cancel out and still be 95 average. So let's call 95 plus 95 plus 95 plus 95. Plus, let's just say um, she gets the same average score on the other two exams, right? We'll call it 2x, and this has to equal 540, right? If I, uh, so essentially it's 4 times 95 plus 2x is equal to 540. This gives us the total sum of all the scores, assuming that the last two scores are the same, which again, it's asking for an average for the last two scores, so we can just assume that they're going to be the same. If I solve this for x, I end up getting 540 minus 4 times 95 divided by 2. That's going to give you 80. Okay, so the average that she can get, if she gets an 80% on those last two exams, she will have a 90% average, which means she'll have an A, or at least an A minus. What's the 439th digit of the decimal sequence shown here? So the key thing about this sequence is that it's gonna repeat. So the digit after five is just going to be nine, two, eight, three, seven, four, six, five, and it keeps repeating, okay? The key thing you need to notice is that every, so there's eight digits here, every eighth digit is gonna be a five. So the 16th digit is gonna be a five, the 24th, the 32nd, etc. okay? So we can use that to our advantage to find what the 439th is gonna be. If 439 is divisible by four, or sorry, by eight, then that digit should be a five, right? The thing is 439 is not divisible by, five, uh, by eight. But if we increase it by one to 440, that is in fact divisible by eight. So that means that the 440th digit is gonna be a five. So if I just look at the number line, just draw it out. This is a five, and that means the number before it 
is going to be a six. So your answer is going to be D. 100 students in a class were given a two option quiz about which fruits they liked. The options were pomegranates and grapefruit. 75 said that they liked pomegranate, 83 said that they liked grapefruit. At least how many like both? So the best way to do this is to visualize it. So let's say this line represents 100 students. And then let's say this blue line represents 75 of them that like pomegranate. And then let's say that this green line represents uh, 83 that like grapefruit, okay? So what we're looking for is how much overlap is there? We're looking for the least number of people that like both. So the overlap, I mean, one way to do it is to, since we're visualizing this and marking it, in the middle, I know that this is going to be 50, right? This is 50 students because it's right in the middle. So there's 50 students here, 50 here. Now, if I look at the grapefruit side of this, I see that the grapefruit people, how many are there? Um, 83 said they like grapefruit. 83 is just 50 plus 33, right? That means that this this length of this uh, uh, segment of the grapefruit group is going to be 33 people because up until here you have 50 people and then up until here is going to be the remainder. We can do the same type of analysis going the other way for the pomegranate. So here you have 50 pomegranate people here and then you have the remaining 25 right here. So if I add up this these two visualized segments, I get 33 plus 25, which should give me 58. And that's the answer. Another way to do it is to just add these two numbers together. That's 158. And you notice it's just 58 more than those 100 because those 58 students were counted twice for two different fruit groups. Already did that problem. Cool. All right. This is the second to last problem of the 10. So how do we do this? Which of these essentially is equal to this? So let's first simplify this. Um, I'm going to move this down here. So 1 over a to the b, b to the c all to the b over c. So we can distribute the b over c exponent to each of these. So it's going to be 1 over a to the b to the b over c times b to the c to the b over c. That's going to give you 1 over. Um, so when you have exponent to an exponent, you just multiply the exponent. So it's b squared over c, b squared over c times, again, we just multiply these. So that'll just give you c times b over c, which is b to the b, OK? Now, none of the answer options match this, but this one, if we check it, it looks like it's just moving this up here and then making the exponent negative. So this will this actually equals b to the negative b over a to the b squared over c. And that's what a is, okay? So it's just a matter of rearranging things to check which answer option equates. Um, this might take a little longer if you don't know which one it is, but again, just the way we did it here. A small cubic box has a volume of this. A large cubic box has a volume of this. How many small boxes can fit in the large box? So let's first, uh, you could just divide these two numbers, but that's actually not going to give you the right answer. What you need to do is visualize in your head how these two boxes are going to work. So this large box is going to look like this. And the small box might look like if I draw the, if I draw that, the small box might fit somewhere like right here. You don't need to do that. Just draw it out fully. Okay, so this has some length. And obviously, the large box has some length as well. So the main thing that's going to constrain these boxes is the length. Because um, if you just divide these, you're going to get uh, a number that's not really going to work. So we need to find how many lengths of boxes can we add. Let's first find the length of each box. So this is going to be 12 to the one third. If you want to find the length of a, uh, of a cube, we just take the volume divided by, uh, we, we take the third root. So 12 to the one third is going to give us 2.289. And then this number to the one third is going to give us 11.42. Okay, so how many 2.289s can you fit in 11.42? Well, if you just add 2.289 to itself, let's see what happens. So 2.289. And then let's, let's see what happens when we multiply by 2. We get 4.578. And then plus 2.289, we get 6.867. And then we add it again, 2.289, we get 9.156. And then we add it again, 2.289, we end up getting 11.445. OK, so this these numbers are below, but this one is above. 
four two because this is our limit right this length right here is 11.42 we can't go longer than that because then this box is actually going to be outside of the large box and then it's not really fitting inside anymore so that's wrong okay so since this is just just above that means that we can only fit four boxes now that's just the length wise um, we can fit four this way you can also fit four that way and then four up. So it's really going to be four times four times four, which is going to give you 64 boxes. All right. So it's a complicated problem. You can only fit four one way, but you can also fit them up into the to the to the back dimension as well. So that's how you do these problems. Again, I know that I went through these pretty quickly and they might have been a little confusing. So what I recommend you do if you need help with understanding any of these is just schedule a tutoring session with one of our experts. It'll be 15 minutes. You can even make it go a little bit longer if you really want to. Uh, and and it, you can engage in a conversation where you can learn about these concepts in depth with an expert. Um, if you want more help, one-on-one -on -one help, tutoring services, we have that as well on our website, one-on-one -on -one tutoring with some of our uh, most qualified tutors that have really high ACT scores and have performed very well in the exam and have helped many students in their time tutoring as well. So you can get access to that. There's thousands of online problems on our website, practice exams that we've created just for problems like this and for hard questions, uh, and a lot more content and videos that are much more advanced than the videos on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.